The Baptist in 1791 argued, quote, the holy author of our religion needs no compulsive measures for the promotion of his cause that the gospel wants not the feeble arm of man for its support. Amen. Now it's interesting in our day, and we'll talk about this perhaps in a little while. It is interesting in our day that 80% of the churches that the Law Center deals with on the subject of unincorporating their church and becoming a lordship church, we get amens and hallelujahs till we get to the tax deductible gift. 80% of the churches who do not follow through and unincorporate, we lose at the tax deductible gift because they are determined that the church wants the feeble arm of man for its support. Amen. Senator Sumner in 1872 said, We have no right to enter a church and interfere in any way with its religious ordinances. But when a church organization asks the benefit of the law by an act of incorporation, it must submit itself to the great primal law of the, of the Union, the Constitution of the United States. It can have the aid it seeks only by submitting to this law. Now there are a number of things in what he said here that I don't have time to explore. One of the things that he said obviously is when you ask to incorporate, you put yourself under the authority and the jurisdiction of the government because you are asking for their benefit. The other thing that's interesting here and this is I believe misunderstood in our day, is the fact that he said once you ask for an act of incorporation, you put yourself under what? The Constitution of the United States. We have a lot of people arguing today, ah, churches have no constitutional rights, but unincorporated churches have constitutional rights. Foolishness. Incorporated churches have constitutional rights. They have rights that are defined and limited by the Constitution. Unincorporated churches, lordship churches, have no constitutional rights because lordship churches are spiritual entities, not legal entities, who therefore have no relationship to the Constitution. And Sumner noted that in 1872. Here are some of the cases that frame the issue for us. This is uh, from uh, Layman versus Piggly Wiggly. I'm pleased to announce that Piggly Wiggly was not a church. Uh, <laughs> However, the case itself was instructive. <laughs> case from 1944, a corporation exists by force of legislative enactment. Its inception and the duration of its power determined by law. When the time approaches for its dissolution, it is dependent on the will of, watch this, its creator as expressed in legislative enactment. And who shall have the right to question its existence and the measure of its powers is likewise determined by the author of its being in Ohio that sovereign will is expressed in the General Corporation Act. Now I want you to notice some key words that I've obviously put into yellow, which is not in the original decision for those of you that are legal researchers. All right? It's dependent on the will of its creator. In order to incorporate a church, you have to recognize that the state is the creator of that church as opposed to that which uh, Brother McCurry so well defined for us this morning that the Lord Jesus Christ is the creator of the church. We now have two different creators. See, there is a, there is a belief in our day that the, that the whole incorporation thing, number one, is a new, new kid on the block. As you can see, it is not. Way back in the 1700s, people were fighting against this thing because it was a wrong submission away from the uh, protection and the sovereignty of God. Secondly, we are being, we are being told that actually we're, uh, that there is no reason why you cannot be a real lordship church and recognize Christ as Lord and at the same time be a corporation. Here is reason number one, because you have to recognize a different creator than God for the church. And when you recognize that the church is the creator, you then run into the problem that you have a sovereign will, which is a state sovereign will, not the sovereign will of God. So the corporation then is created by another. It has the author of its being, that is the one who dictates its policies, and the sovereign will under which it is ruled are all separate from God and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I have therefore created an entity which I claim is under the Lordship of Christ, which does not recognize Christ as its creator. It is, a, it is an entity which does not recognize the Word of God as its sole authority, and it is an organization that is not under the sovereign will of God because, folks, sovereignty is exclusive. That means if someone is sovereign, he is the sole authority over something. If there are two authorities over something, neither one of them is the sole authority, neither one of them is sovereign. If the state of Ohio in this case was sovereign over the corporation, God then could not be sovereign over the corporation, you see.